Emi mi mo wa joba Ko wa she ise iyanu Ninu aye mi o Baba wa gbe ogo rega You know it? Emi mi mo wa joba Is that not cry? Ko wa she ise iyanu Leviticus chapter 6, verses 12 to 13. And the Bible says, And the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order on it. And he shall burn on it the fat of the peace offering. Verse 13 is very key. A fire shall always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. Ephesians to the five. Verse 18. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Today, this morning, I want to teach on set your spirit ablaze. <laughs> Ninu wa ewa o Baba wa gbe o ko Emi mi mo wa joba Wa she she ya Ninu wa ewa o Baba wa gbe Eternal King of glory, we come. Desirous of new fire. Desirous of change. We come, O oh God, not invoking our past experiences, but emptying them before you. We ask that you will move upon us in no small measure. Lord, we do not just want to have a taste. We want to take short and short in the spirit. Fill us up, O oh God, until we overflow. Fill us up until we overflow. As many as are thirsty, Father, let them drink. And as many as come without, no, without any hunger and no thirst, create a hunger in them. Create a thirst, O oh God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, and amen. amen. There is such a cloud of glory in this place this morning. Please be seated. I hope I will be able to preach this message. As I was preparing this, and I don't want you to have church this morning. You don't have to sit where you are. You can change your place. Some of you can sit on the floor. Some can kneel. You can lie down. But I was preparing this and I began to cry. Because I asked the Lord for a report of my life. And what I saw was not what I wanted. And I began to cry. As some of you will cry this day. The 
Bible says, a fire shall always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. There is such a glory in this place. There's such a cloud that has moved in. I can barely even open my eyes. Listen. The fire that keeps burning. One of the primary responsibilities of the priest in the old covenant is to keep the fire burning on God's altar perpetually. Perpetually. It was God's responsibility to set the fire, to send the fire. It was the priest's responsibility to ensure that the fire keeps burning. I hope you know that it's your responsibility that the fire of the Lord will keep burning in your life. You haven't come here today because you didn't have anywhere else to go. Yahweh brought you because you have an appointment with destiny. God expressly commanded them. He said, a fire shall always be burning on the altar. Listen, dear friends. God's fire must continually burn in your soul. God's fire must continually burn in your heart. And I want to move very quickly today. What does that mean to a New Testament believer? Recall in Joel chapter 2, verses 28 to 29, Prophet Joel gave a prophecy. And what was the prophecy? Uh, Malishiva kaporu hadiasi aliti avanoha. Uh, the, the prophecy was simple. He said, it shall come to pass in those days that I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He says, your sons, your daughters shall prophesy. He said, your old men will see visions. That word pour out there is the Hebrew word shafak. And what was God saying? He said, I will take a measure of myself. I will take part of me and I will give it to you. So there is a portion of God in you if you are a born again believer. You are not alone. You are with God. You carry a tangibility of his presence. You carry him. God gave himself to you. Or something happened in the book of Luke chapter 3 verse 16. I believe Matthew 7. Uh, no, Matthew 3, 11 to 12. Luke 3 verse 16. John was asked, are you the prophet? Are you the one they prophesied about? Are you the Messiah or should we look for someone else? But, but, but he looked at them and said, I am not the one. He said, because I baptize you with water. He said, there is someone who comes after me. He said, he is the one who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. People believe that that baptism talks about two baptisms. It's just one. Uh, what that John was saying was that he was progressing the prophecy of Joel. Joel says, by the coming of the Spirit, you begin to prophesy. Uh, John was showing us another dimension of that prophecy, uh, of what the Spirit comes. He said, one of the tangibility of the Spirit coming is that you will operate in fire. You will operate in fire. The Spirit coming, so there is no two baptism. There is no baptism in the Spirit and then the baptism in fire. It is the coming of the Spirit upon the believer that also brings fire upon the believer. So if you have been baptized in the Spirit, you have a measure of His fire in your life. Somebody understand what I'm saying? So John introduced us to the fire dimension. John showed us that you can have the Spirit... And by the coming of the Spirit, there is the fire of God in your soul. There is the fire of God in your spirit, John told us. What does that fire, what does it represent very quickly this morning? Because I want you to just pursue God. I believe that this is not a sermon where you write notes only. Just, just do as the Spirit will have you do. If you want to run, run. If you want to jump, jump. If you want to pray, pray. Just pursue God. The nature of the fire of the spirit, number one, is that the fire consecrates. You cannot live a life of consecration without the fire of the spirit. Meaning that you cannot live a life that is set apart without the fire of the spirit. It takes the spirit being a glow in your spirit, man, for you to live a life of consecration. Somebody says, man of God, what is consecration? 
Consecration is a simple word that means to be set apart. And when we speak about consecration as it concerns New Testament believers, we are saying that the consecration of God, of Yahweh, what it means is that it sets your life apart for a purpose that is of Christ. Meaning that I will not follow anything, I will just follow Jesus. There is a purpose higher than just my pursuit of money, my pursuit of fame. I will pursue that which is paramount in the heart of God. I set myself apart for the purposes of Jehovah. That's what consecration is. I won't have sex. Why? I'm consecrated. I won't change jobs. I won't look for money. I'm consecrated to my ministry. Listen to this. When the fire comes, you quit struggling. When the fire comes, that space becomes God's space. That space in your life becomes God's space. When the fire comes, I want to show you that very quickly. Give me Exodus chapter 3, and then we want to read verses 2 to 6. I believe that will show us the journey. Uh, it will show us what it means. Uh, Exodus 3, verses 2 to 6. Uh, the, the Bible made something very clear. Open your Bible if you can, please. Exodus chapter 3 and then verse 2 to 6. The Bible says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. Where did he appear to him? Speak to me. When did he appear to him? How did he appear? In a flame of fire. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush does not burn? So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, here am I, here I am. He said, Then he said, Do not draw near to this place. He said, Take your sandals off. Your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. That place became the space of God. And while can we see it in the physical, it was the manifestation in fire. How do we know that that space has become God's space? There was fire there. There was the manifestation, even of fire. If your life hasn't become God's life, it is because his fire hasn't touched it. There is the fire that consecrates. There is a fire that sets apart. You quit addiction. You quit struggling. Because there is a fire that sets apart. Number two, there is the fire that transforms. The fire of God. First work he does is that he consecrates. The second work he does is that he transforms. It was the fire of God that transformed Peter from a shaking reed to a rock. Peter was a shaking reed. But the fire of God transformed him. The Bible says as it concerns the man Peter, that the, wit the testimony that the Bible gave concerning him was that he got to a place and a servant girl asked him, do you know the Christ? A servant girl who had no right and he rejected the Christ. He said, I don't know. He denied him. But the Bible says, post Pentecost, something happened at Pentecost. Scripture says, and the day of Pentecost had fully come. Let's read Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. Scripture says, something happened to Peter at Pentecost. That the man who denied the Christ was now so fired that he was able to preach to thousands. Listen, something can come upon you that will transform your experience. It is called the fire of God. Bible says when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord, even in one place. And suddenly, somebody says suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and he filled the old house where they were sitting. Verse 3, there then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and sat upon each one of them. I mean, as I began to pray yesterday, I saw like molten. You see, there's something in geography that is called molten magma. That is rock existing even in a liquid state. And that is rock in a fire state. It's what happened when lava flows and there is a volcano. You see the lava flows. That is fire. That is rock in a state that is called molten magma. Listen, dear friends, uh, there is such a fire that can come and you will know that fire came upon my life. Uh, you will search that there is a fire upon my life. People saw it. Uh, they were not spiritual people that saw it. Uh, people saw it and they saw a manifestation. They said something appeared upon each and every one of them uh, like clothing tongues. 
tongues, uh, even of fire. Can I ask you, do you have Pentecostal fire? What has changed in you? Because of that fire, Peter stood uh, and preached uh, to people he was afraid of. Uh, thousands. Uh, what transformed his life was Pentecost. Uh, listen, do you have Pentecostal fire? Listen to this. Are you still afraid? Uh, are you still addicted? Uh, are you still lost? Uh, are you still living a life of depression? Uh, are you still living a life of pain? Uh, are you still living a life of offense? Uh, are you still living a life uh, not knowing what tomorrow holds? Uh, there is a thing that can come upon your life. Uh, it's called the fire of the spirit. Uh, oh, it was what John prophesied about. Uh, he said, I'm not the baptizer. He said, there is he the baptizer. When Jesus would come and Jesus has come. Hallelujah. The baptizer in the spirit has come. Uh, therefore, when he baptizes, uh, he doesn't just baptize in the spirit. Uh, he also ensures there is a fire of God. Uh, even upon your life. Uh, listen, dear friend, fire leaves an impact. I don't know whether you know that fire leaves an impact. Uh, if you have ever been born with fire, you will, your skin will show the scar. Uh, because fire leaves an impact. Uh, anything fire touches, it leaves an impact. Uh, fire leaves traces. Uh, show me that you carry the fire of the spirit. Uh, show me it has passed through your life. I want to see the deadened affections. Uh, I want to see the deadened desires. Uh, I want to see those things that you no longer do. When fire passes through a body, it burns that place. You don't have feeling in that place anymore. It deadens it. I want to see your deadened affections. I don't want to see your deadened desires. You still smoke. You still drink the way you used to drink before. You still smoke the way you used to smoke before. You still move after girls the way you used to do before. There is no fire upon your life. I want to see the affections. I want to see what has changed. I want to see transformation. Show me brother. Show me sister. Show me the scar. Show me the traces of transformation in your life. The impact of the Spirit is that it transforms all that it touches. Just like fire does. If you have encountered the Spirit, where is this transforming zeal in your life? It will show. It will show. Your life will be a testament to the changes that God alone can bring. Listen, there are very viable proof to knowing Jesus and encountering this, the Spirit. Show me the proof. Show me the proof this morning. I'm not asking for signs and wonders. I'm not asking, I'm telling you, do you lay hands on somebody and it falls? Uh, we are moving on to deeper things. Uh, I'm asking you for the personal testimony of transformation in your life. Uh, I'm asking you what has changed since you know the Christ. Uh, oh, you pray in tongues, brother, that's not enough. Uh, many people pray in tongues. Uh, those who even sleep around, they pray in tongues. Uh, I want to see what has left you because you knew Christ. Uh, that fear is still holding on to you. That pain, that addiction uh, is still holding itself up to you. There is something that has to give this morning. You have to cry out. Let your fire flow. Let your fire flow in my life. Let it consume anything that is dead. I'm no longer satisfied at doing church. I'm no longer satisfied coming to church. You know, they say, hallelujah. You raise your hand, hallelujah. You've learned the lingo of church people. You know how to sound like a church person. But there is no transformation in your life. Church has become an option. Coming to church has become an option. Oh, you come to church, stay in church, look at us. Uh, and then you press your phone. Uh, you do not know you are in the presence of the Holy of Holies. Uh, God has come into his temple uh, and he will have nothing but you. He will have you alone and you completely. You completely. Number three, what does the fire do? The fire of God empowers. The fire of God empowers. Oh, I can tell you when the fire came upon my life. I can give you gist in the spiritual house. I can, I can give you details of how my life was transformed by that fire. I remember that day when I began to see a tingly sensation in my hands. And my hands were burning. Just like Moses saw a burning bush, you need to understand God's fire does not destroy. He only purifies. He only empowers. He only transforms. And I began to sense what's going on here. I can tell you of days and days. Yesterday, I sat in the house and I was worshiping God. I was worshiping God and I began to hear the sound of rain. I told the guy that was with me, I said, is it raining? He said, it's not raining. I said, it's raining. He went outside, he checked, he said, it is not raining. But I could hear the sound of abundance of rain. I could hear the sound of rain. Oh, I remember that day at... at, at 
That's the Lord. And as I was praying in that place, uh, I, I, and I began to pray in the house alone. Uh, oh, and I was saying, Lord, give me you. Give me you. It's only you that will do. It's only you that matters. Uh, let fresh fire, let it fall. Uh, I'm not going to do religion. Uh, I'm tired of doing church. Uh, Lord, you will come again. Uh, you will fill me afresh. Uh, and I remember suddenly I began to smell uh, that something was burning. Uh, I began to smell that something was burning. Uh, I quickly went and I checked, I checked, looked at the fridge, it was the only thing plugged and it wasn't burning, but there was the fire burning the, the fire of the Lord came listen, those things will not change you you don't need the details of my encounters with God what you need to know is the consequences of those encounters, what you need to know is that because of that encounter my ministry changed, because of that encounter there was deliverances because of that encounter there began to be healings, listen, when God comes upon your life, you quit struggling for result because result becomes the order of the day. One minute will you pray in the spirit? One minute will you pursue him? One minute will you pursue him? One minute will you pursue him? I want to touch God. Ke pola pasi na mandu e peli ya di abasha. Jipo shipo kapari e peli ya di abasha. Let your fire fall in this place. Let your fire flow in this place. I, I call for signs and wonders. In this place, let your presence flow. In this place, open the floodgates in abundance and cause your rain to fall. Baba. Because your to fall on me. Chase him is your father. Chase him is your father. Chase him is your father. <laughs> friends the temple of God is now in you it means there is the altar in your spirit and that fire must not go out you are not a priest just to be shouting I'm a priest I'm a king you are a priest with a duty to ensure that the fire of the Lord in your spirit never goes out it shouldn't you can't afford to let it go out oh there is a feeling again consequent to Pentecost there is a feeling again consequent to Pentecost after Pentecost, they had feelings again. It was not just a one-time feeling. They had a feeling again. Can I say to somebody that Christianity is not a once-in-a-lifetime initiation. It's a continual baptism in the Spirit. It's not a once-in-a-lifetime initiation. It's a continual baptism in the Spirit. There is yet a feeling. Amo Kapa. Edira Shopili had That you are filled once. Doesn't mean that's all you need. Being born again is not all there is to the Christian faith. Don't stop on your journey. Don't stop at the starting point. There's much more than praying in tongues. There's much more than being able to explain a verse of the Bible. There is more in God. There is more in God. I tell people, don't give me doctrine. Give me Jesus. Don't give me theology. Give me Jesus. Give me his person. I want a personal work. Give me Jesus. 
It's all that counts. It's all that matters. Give me Jesus. You remember that song I used to sing? In the morning, when I rise, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. In the morning, when I rise, give me Jesus. I don't want to explain Bible verse. I want him. I don't want to read him in the pages of scriptures. I want to have a walk with him. I don't want pastor to explain him. I want to walk with him. The Bible says, and Noah walked. No, it wasn't Noah. It was Enoch that walked with him and it was no more. There is a walking with God. And it begins with not being satisfied with your presence. You need to task for God. Listen to this. At Pentecost, the disciples were filled. But after that feeling, they still got filled again and again. Acts chapter 4 verse 8. The Bible says, Then Peter, filled with the Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people, filled with the Spirit. I love Acts chapter 4 verse 31. Give me 4, 31, the book of Acts. If you can, if you can't, I'll read it for you. Scripture says, And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaking. Who are the people that prayed, brothers and sisters? The people that prayed were the disciples. They were the apostles. The people that prayed were disciples. They were people who had known the Christ. Scripture says they prayed. These were people who were at Pentecost. They were in Acts chapter 2 at the upper room. But the scripture says they prayed. And after they prayed, the place they were was shaking. The place they were was shaking. And the Bible says, and this is 431, not 48 uh, of Acts. Uh, scripture says uh, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit uh, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Uh, boldness came uh, because the Spirit came again. Uh, boldness came uh, because the Spirit came again. They had an encounter before that time. Uh, they were beaten. So that introduced fear. That introduced fear. But scripture says they prayed and they were filled again. Can I say to somebody, this is not a church for everybody. This is a church for people who are thirsty for the Christ. This is a church for people who are thirsty for the Spirit. We are not raising uh, lily pitoots. We are raising generals, uh, men who will be captains of industry, who will stand for Christ in the nations of the world. We are raising people who are in fire for God. Fire is our emblem, the fire of the Spirit. Are you satisfied with your presence? you need to say Lord I want more I want more I say on Monday that song says I say on Sunday how much I want revival then on Monday I can't even find my Bible where's the power the power of the cross in my life I'm sick of playing the game of religion Listen, you must be sick of playing religion. I, I'm done with religion. I can't say I want revival on Sunday and then on Monday I can't find a place for God. On Tuesday, I can't find a place for God. Your Bible is as neat as your dress. You don't touch it, you don't read it. You need fresh fire, brethren. You need fresh fire. Bible says in 1352, disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, I want another shot again. The way that drink had we look at bellies and say, give me more shots, give me more shots, give me more shots. Paul said, Paul said, listen, do not be drunk with wine in which there is dissipation. He said, but keep being filled with the Holy Ghost. Is there somebody who is saying, Holy Spirit, give me more. Holy Spirit, give me more, give me more, give me more. I want more. I want more. There is a river. There is a river that makes glad the city of our God. There is a river. There is a river that you can swim in. There is a river. There is an overflow. Even in the Christ. There is no more. There is more. There is more. I want more. Are you craving for God? Are you craving for God? The fire signifies. Can I, can I make further cases to you for, for fresh fire? Can I prove to you you need fresh fire? Let me give you certain things to tell you that. Understand that true worship of God is not possible. Except your spirit man is aglow. Uh, because God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If you don't have the spirit, you can't worship God. You can shout and dance in church. But that doesn't go anywhere. 
for the dance and the, 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 the praise and worship to be accepted, it has to come from a spirit that is aglow. Is your spirit aglow? What does it mean to be on fire? It means to be aglow. It means to be alive. It means to be aligned to the will and the purposes of God. That's what we mean when we talk about fire. It means to be aglow, to be alive, to align with God's purposes. Can I tell you, dear friends, that true Christian race is a spiritual race. It takes a spiritual man to run it. It takes spiritual men to run it. Christianity is not a mixture of carnality with spirituality. No, sir. It's not a mixture. No, no, no. It's not, it's not sakikos with a little bit of sakikos. It's not a, a carnal man with a little bit of spirituality. Christianity is a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. Is there somebody who is thirsty for God? Are you alive? Is your spirit man awake? When was the last time God reproved you? When? If I answer that question, it was yesterday. The journey to spirituality and the journey to maturity is not just hearing God, it's being reproved by Him. Is Him telling you that is wrong? Is Him telling you you could have handled that better? When was the last time God reproved you? When was the last time he spoke to you? When was the last time you shared unchecked time with God? Do you know what it means unchecked? Oh, no. You just lay abandoned, reckless abandoned in the presence of the Savior. When was the last time you got on his wavelength? When was the last time you had a vision, a dream or a prophecy from God? When was the last time? Listen, God is constantly speaking. The Bible says he speaks expressly. If you are not hearing, it's because you are out of alignment. Ah, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10. The Bible says if the iron be blunt, if the ass earth be blunt, he said there will be need for more energy. There will be need for more energy. The reason you struggle in the spirituals is because your iron edge is blunt. I remember my old friend who said to me, ah, Man of God, it takes a while. We're in school those days. He said it takes a while to acquire God's presence. He said it takes a while. You pray, you worship, sometimes two hours, three hours to acquire God's presence. I knew he was saying his truth, but his truth was not my truth. Because it didn't take me that long to acquire his presence. It never took me that long to acquire his presence. You know why? Because I'm conscious of that presence every day. You don't need to acquire what you walk in every day. Uh, you don't need to, you, you don't need to, you just have to walk in alignment. Uh, I knew the song that will start this summer because I had this song, I had sang it before. I knew everything I was going to say because I've been there before. I don't want to get out of line with how I saw it. Uh, why? Because you have to be in alignment with him. Do you have to sharpen your edge? Somebody said, I've been praying for four months, he hasn't said anything. He didn't move, you moved. He didn't move, you moved. It's time to sharpen your edge. Somebody say, I'm frustrated with life. You are frustrated because you let the devil frustrate you. If you tell yourself the truth, you have been guessing for a while now. You are not working on divine instruction, you have been guessing. You are not living on clear cut instructions anymore. Something has changed. It's time for the alignment. You said it's your job, you said it's Lagos. He said it's your family. He said it's adulting. It's adulting. But truth is, it's you. You have lost your love for God. Your passion is out. Your faith is gone. Your drive is dissipated. You need God. You need fresh fire. You need fresh feeling. Oh, God is calling you back this morning. And it's okay to cry. It's okay to break down. Jesus is jealous. He knew where he used to find you. He has come to hidden, but he can't find you there. You have deserted your place of koinonia. He has come to the secret place of intimacy, and he can't find you. Jesus is calling like he called Adam. Where are you? Where are you? Where is our time? Where is that space we used to share when you were in school? Where was that space when you had a covenant with me? Where was that space when you knew? You didn't have money, but you had my fire inside of you. 
You didn't have a job, but you had a joy inside of you. God is saying, I came to the place we meet, our place of intimacy. God is not desiring your love because it's love thirsty. He just want to pour his love on you. God is saying, I can't find you there. I came to Eden, and you are missing. I came to Eden, and you are not there. It was at this point that I lost it while I was preparing this sermon. It was at this point that I knew that I was not raising a church. I was raising a mixed multitude. If you will not pursue God, you have my permission not to come again. If you will not chase God, you have my permission to stay at home. I just want thirsty people. I just want people who Jesus is their priority. That is the template. It's not me. It's called the ransom for a reason. When they make him priority, and I'll show you that this morning, he will make them his priority. Your prayer points will reduce because you'll become God's priority. Your, your cries will reduce because you'll become God's priority. Jesus here, that secret. Matthew 6, 33. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he said, all the other things shall be added unto you. It takes making him priority for him to make you priority. You are an hustler. <laughs> Jesus wants you blessed. I have never struggled to flow in the spirit. I have never struggle to have God. But I can tell you that Lagos can happen to all of us. When we begin to count the numbers, it can begin to affect us, even the deepest of us. As I count the numbers of the flock, you count the numbers in your account. And God is saying, it is not those things that matter. It is me that matter. You can count numbers, but if you don't count Jesus there, what you counted is empty. What you counted is still zero. Because one million times zero is zero. Two billion times zero is zero. The God factor is the multiplying factor that makes life make sense. If you don't have the Christ, there is nothing you are doing. It's a waste. If he is not pleased with you, it's a waste. If you are not in alignment, it's a waste. I would rather have him. I would rather have Jesus. I'll make room for two. I like to sing it this way. I'll make room for one. It's only you, Jesus. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. Oh, hey, oh. You are all that matters. Oh. Sing that song, give Jeep is all that matters. You are all that matters. Oh, hey, oh, hey. You are all that matters. Oh, hey, oh, hey. You are all that matters. <laughs>
testimony in that song that says, What would I become of you? I live for if, if I, I don't, don't have you in my life? What would I be if you take the Holy Ghost? What would I be? Closing that deal that matters. I hope he's not marrying this year that matters. I hope it's not that Benz that matters. I hope it's not that man that matters. You know, we can come to church and lie in our songs. I hope that's all that matters. It's not that dollar that matters. Hey! Oh, well. <laughs> to rekindle your fire. See, if you are trying to sleep, or sleep is trying to get you in a service like this, that battery is gone. One day I was driving. I was retired. And, and, and he began to share with me how that even the ship on water, when the ship is parked, they don't turn off the engine. If they don't turn off the engine, because if they do, the ship can sink. So it has to be alive in a way. So even if they turn off the one that moves, there still has to be an element of it so that it does not sink, so that it can float. Let me say this to you. Your spirit man needs to be floating every time. You can't switch off. You, you can't switch off. Switching off will kill you. I woke up with that idea of that ship this morning when I just took a nap for two hours. That's when I woke up and the Lord said, tell them not to be like sheep. Tell them to be like sheep. That engine never goes off. Tell them. Tell them. They are in the midst of life. They can't switch off. Tell them. They can't afford the light to go off. Like the priest could not afford the light in the temple to go off. They can't afford it. You can't afford it. Just a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hand, so shall your poverty party comes like I'm a man. You can't afford it. How do you rekindle your fire? How do I set my spirit man ablaze again? Five things very quickly. Five things very quickly. Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I 
will never let you go. You taking me from the miry clay, set my feet upon the rock, and now I know my love. let you go the first thing you need to do is to rediscover your love for God the first thing to set your spirit man ablaze again is to rediscover your love for God give me Revelations chapter 3 verses 4 to 5 Revelations 3 4 to 5 the words of the resurrected Christ to the church at Ephesus must teach us it must teach us Jesus was telling them Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. He said, remember therefore where, from where you are fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand. What does lampstand do? It brings fire. He said, if there is no fire, there is no need for the lampstand. I will come and remove that lampstand from its place unless you repent. He said, but he said, you will not receive your fire again or you will not be able to set your spirit man ablaze except you rediscover your first love. Jesus said, the solution is to remember the place from where you have fallen and do your first works. What do you used to do when you met him? When you started your walk with the Lord, what was it like? Jesus said, go back to your first works. What was Jesus commanding his church to do? He told them in verse 5, he said, Remember therefore from where thou hast fallen and repent and do the first works. The phrase first works come from, I don't want to teach Greek today, but let's just go there for a while. It means uh, prota ega, prota ega. Uh, and that's prota is spelled P R O T A. What does it mean? It means first. Prota ega, first. And the ega is spelled E R G A. What does it mean? It means works. It means deeds. It means activity. So he said to them, remember your first works. Uh, the idea of prota ega is that it conveys the idea of work that is produced by consistent and tireless efforts. Consistent. So when Jesus said your first works, your first love, he was talking about that consistency. He was talking about tireless effort. Listen, spiritual discipline will take effort. Spiritual discipline takes tirelessness. I am tired of praying. Of course, we all are. We all are, but you've got to pray. The King James translates this Greek phrase as first works. It could actually be interpreted that it's the best interpretation is the actions that were indicative of you at first. The actions that were indicative of you at first. Jesus was saying, there was something I knew you with when you became born again. It was your worship. It was something I knew you with. It was your evangelism. It was something I knew you with before when you became born. It was your prayer. How you prayed morning, noon, and night. It was something I knew you with. It was the poem, the love letter like David that you wrote to me. He said, there are things I knew you with that it is indicative of you at first. This is how they knew you in the realm of the spirit. This is, was your mark. This was your zeal. This is how you began in the realm of the spirit. This is how you started off. Jesus was saying, go back to there. Jesus commanded them to return to the first works. There were works and activities that characterized the congregation at Ephesus. At the beginning of their spiritual journey, there was something that Christ knew them from. What were these first works that distinguished the church? One day I will teach on that first works. It's a lot. I don't want to digress. But what are the first things that characterize your knowing the Lord? When you first knew the Lord, it was okay for you to cry. Now you don't cry. When you first knew the Lord, it was okay to read the Bible. 
When you first knew the Lord, you do not accuse people and become critical and say, we have done it before <laughs> many years ago. They were all run out of that fire. That's indicative of your first works. See how far you have gone. When you first knew the Lord, it was not money. Now, money is priority. Jesus did not promise you poverty. He only said, I have to be number one. The fact that Christ called them to return doesn't necessarily mean they had, com- they had left all those things completely. However, it is evident that the intensity of their zeal had radically diminished. The zeal, the passion they had had reduced. Three things are important here. Number one, remember, remember. So how do you do this? Remembering how the fire of God was born in your heart is essential. Can you remember as you sat down there how the fire of God first born in your heart? How you went everywhere in Ikorodu, went everywhere in your village, in Imo State, went everywhere looking for the Christ, looking for souls, praying all night. Remember now. Remember. God wants us to remember because certain things, remembering certain things are good for us. Remember. Number two, repentance was also Jesus' requirement. I have seen where I was and where I am now. I'm going to repent. I'm going to repent. An acknowledgement and the confession of her sins. I'm going to repent. I'm going to repent. I'm going to repent. Yesterday, it was my turn to repent. And I'll tell you as a pastor, because I need to be sincere, I've never preached to you in deception. And I looked at, and and I stayed in his presence, and I began to say, Lord, I repent. I just want to see others the way you see them. Father, Give me the grace to see Christ in them. Give me the grace to see through the lens of the Christ. Help me. Help me. Some of you criticize everything. But if you can see with the lens of the Christ, maybe it will be better. So what is the second one? You remember number one. Number two, you repent. And then number three, repentance demands proof. You see, when you repent, when a person confesses his sin and does not change anything, what he has only done is to admit his guilt. Nothing is going to change. He only admits his guilt. True repentance is also accompanied with a corresponding action. I the things I used to do, I do them no more. If there is no not doing them anymore, then it's a total waste of time. Jesus made it clear that the proof of their repentance will be a return to a personal, a passionate pursuit of him. That will be the proof. You can look sad now, but will you return to a passionate, passionate pursuit? Why am I saying passionate like an Ibadan boy? A passionate pursuit even of God. Amen. Number two, you have to return to your place of intimacy. James made it clear. He said, he gave us a secret formula to intimacy. For it, he said, draw near to him and he will draw near to you. It means that if you are far from God, it is your choice. If you draw near to him this morning, he will draw near to you. 42, 1 Psalms, scripture says, as the deer pants for the water brooks. Panted for the water so my soul long after thee. You are Oh! 
God will test your desire. When I became born again on the campus and I was made a campus executive, those days I used to watch football. We never missed it. Saturday and Sunday after church, we go and watch football. But now on Sunday, there was executive meetings that will last throughout the day. So God began to test me with my love of football. Is it me or football? Which one will you take? It's an armful, but God will test you. That lady will misbehave. God wants to know which one you will take. That job, your boss will quit on you. Which one will you take? The most awesome thing about the Christian race is that our God is not far but near. This is the only religion on the earth that our God is near. This is the only religion on the earth that your God is near you. There is no other religion on the earth that their God is close to them. No one. Only this one. Only Christianity. You don't need an intermediary to get to the presence of your father. Only Christianity. But you still will not go in. Go in because the veil has been removed. Go in because the veil that separates has been removed. Go in. Go in. Your God is close. Our God has come down to the level of man. But like Israel had no place for the Christ. They didn't find a place for him in the room. No place for him in the hymn. No place for him. Some of us still don't have a place for God in our schedules. Like Israel of old, we don't have a place for God. God has never stopped desiring you. I believe God will have me say to you today, this morning, I miss you. I believe God will have me say to you, I miss you. I miss the time we share together. He doesn't miss you because he's lacking love. He misses you because he wants to love on you. The greatest rekindling that the Spirit can give to you is not to make you pray or wake you up to pray. That's what you think, but that's not it. The greatest one is to make you love Jesus more. The greatest revival is to love God more. Over the night, I began to look at that Psalms. I began to pray 85, 6 of Psalms. Will you not revive us again that your people will rejoice in you? Will that not revive us again, oh God? I lie down and I stand up again and began to walk. I look at the window, look out at the darkness outside and I began to say, Lord, will you not revive us again? That your people will rejoice in you. Will you not, re- will you not revive us again? 85 cities of Psalms, that your people may rejoice even in you. Number three. How do I get into this place? I need to set my spirit man aflame again. Number three, prioritize Jesus. Jesus himself shared that secret. I didn't share it. Jesus himself shared their secret. Do you want me to show you? Matthew 10. Give me 37 to 39. Jesus himself shared that secret. Look at that. Jesus said, he who lost father or mother more than me. He said, it's not worthy of me. Ah! That's how I do. I hope you don't read the Bible and think it's your Bible. Let's just leave it. If you are really going to do this, this is hard. He said, and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. My God. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Wow. He said, because he who finds his life will lose it. Uh -uh. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Little wonder many of his disciples left. But these words are telling. What was Jesus saying? Forget mother, mother, all of those things. What was he saying? He was saying to be worthy of him, you must love him more than anything else. To be worthy of him, to be able to acquire his presence, you must love him more than anything else. He must be the first or else he's not on the agenda. You don't put Jesus as number three. He has left the agenda. You don't put Jesus as number two. He has left the agenda. If he's not number one, then he's not on the list. You must love him more than your hobby. More than your wife. It's something my wife knows. 
very clearly. We don't, we don't negotiate that. It is not ministry first. It is God first. Then her. Then ministry. But she does not come in the place of God. Because before she came, God was. And after her, God will be. And before I came into her life, God was first. And after me, God will be. That excuse of it's my son, it's my daughter, it's time, it's job, it will not suffice. It must be the first. I've seen people abandon their faith for the sake of love. I've seen people abandon their faith for the sake of marriage. I've seen people abandon the Christ for just a little fun. I've seen people abandon the Christ for entertainment. You need to set your spirit ablaze again. Number four. Let me give you two more and then we'll close. Number four. And this is very good. You need to dig again your well. Dig again your well. Genesis 36, Genesis 26, verse 18. Look at him and say, dig again. Your well. Say with the fire of the Spirit. Say, dig again. Your well. Look at that. The Bible says, and Isaac dug out. What did he do? Please speak to me. He dug again the wells that the of water with their dog in the days of Abraham is far. Listen to this. This is an important truth and it's a principle of life according to, especially as concerns the spiritual. If you have found water there before, you will find water again. If you have found water there before, you will find water there again. If it was fasting that you got water from, don't listen to any pastor telling you fasting does not change anything. If it was praying in tongues, that was your well. Go dig it again. If it was worship, that was your well. Go dig it again. If it was shutting your doors and praying all night, go dig it again. If it was dancing before the Lord, go dance again. If it was going on retreats that got the job done for you, go on retreat again. If it was camp meeting that got you the anointing and the job done, go to camp meeting again. By the way, the is no longer a meeting. That's become a camp meeting. <laughs> Whatever you did before and the Spirit came, do it again. I am tired of a generation that stopped doing what where, stopped doing the things they did and they met God because of a teaching by certain people who are telling them it is not, it is not okay. Listen, if what you did is not against scriptures, but you did it and God came, do it again. You prayed in tongue 18 hours and you met God and I can't find a place 18 hours where they pray. I don't have to find you. If you find God, please pray. And do 18 hours. If you have to do 28, do 28. If you went to a mountain, a CSC mountain to meet God, and you met him, and people say, God, you can meet God in your hotel room. Oh boy, I hear you. I am going to Arakeji. I am going to Arakeji. I'm going to the mountain. I'm going to Ikoyi. Those are mountains, in case you don't know. So some of you are looking at me, what's he calling? Uh-huh. Is Ori okay, Babalola? That's what they call it. That those are Babalola mountains. If you went there and you met God, and somebody told you, nah, 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 you can stay in your room. You can... Not be him, get God, now nah, you. Go there again. If you were switching off your phone and talking to no one, please switch off that phone again. If you was dancing in the presence of the Lord, please dance again. Whatever you did at the first time and you got God, dig again that well. Meet with God in the places and the places he has met with you before. Little wonder, the patriarchs on their spiritual journey, whenever they meet God in a place, they build an altar there. 
so that when they come to that place again, they know they will find the God of Bethel. They know they will find the God of Shiloh. Why? Because it was in that place that he met them before. God is still in spaces and places where he met you before. If you will do those things, you will meet him again. I'm not just looking for doctrine. Much more, I'm seeking for God. I am seeking for God. I, I know that correctness of doctrine is important, but much more important is the God of the doctrine. I, I want to know the God, not the theology. I'm looking for the God behind the theology, the God of heaven himself. I'm seeking for Yahweh, Yahweh. That's why I'm looking for. I'm not satisfied. I want deep intimacy. I want koinonia. I'm not satisfied with definitions and Greek meanings of intimacy. I want to see the God of the Bible. I want to see the God of the Bible. I want to pass him. You see me pray. And as I pant around my room, like a caged lion, I began to say, nothing less we do, O oh God. Nothing less we do, O oh God. Malisha Barua. Nothing less we do, O oh God. More of you and less of me. More of you and less of me Lord I pray that there might be more of you and less of me like a grain of seed that falls to the ground rise up to live again all my plans and worldly desires, I lay them down to follow you, more of you, less of me, more of you, less of me. Finally, number five, cultivate the discipline of routine. Cultivate the discipline of routine. Religion will tell you discipline will not, routine won't work. Religion will tell you God is not in the routines. What does routine? It means the route you apply again and again. Listen to this in the pattern of the temple, the priest had a routine. In fact, not following that routine, they may die. If your fire will not go out, you need to have routines. Nobody grows beyond their spiritual disciplines. Nobody grows beyond their spiritual discipline. I'll show you routines in scripture. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. The Bible says in Joshua 1, And this book of the law should not depart from your mouth. He said, you shall meditate in it. How? He said, day and night. That you may observe. That is routine. He said, day and night. You continue to look at it. Psalm 1 verse 1 to 2. Blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand the seat of sinner, but sits, look at that word, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates out day and night. Routine, consistency, discipline. Give me Acts chapter 17, verse 2. I want to show you that routine is in scriptures. You need to have spiritual discipline. Then Paul, look at that. Then Paul, as his what? As his custom was. It was his custom. It was what he did on a regular basis. He went to the temple. Some of you just slash church. Anytime you want to come, you come. But the Bible says it was his custom. It's his custom. You see, good Christians are known by their customs. Are you following what I'm saying? It was his custom. He went into them and for three Sabbaths, reason with them from the scriptures. It was his custom. It was his custom. Give me Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. It's good to pray for the spirit of Daniel, but you must do what Daniel did. Look at that. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees.
three times that day and pray and give thanks before his God as was his custom since his early days. As was his what? Since his early days. Give me Luke 4, 16. I think that's enough proof. Is that enough proof? Luke chapter 4, verse 16. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. This was the Christ. You must follow the pattern of the Christ. And as his custom was, he went again to the synagogue. As his custom was. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Every walk is repetitive. Every walk is repetitive. There is, even those who are paying two billion, two million, they have taught them that when they face this kind of problem, there is a policy that tells them this should be the response. Every work in the final analysis is repetitive because if it cannot be repeated, then it's not a work. In fact, the law of work says it can be repeated, therefore it can be taught. If it cannot be repeated, it cannot be passed along. Your spiritual work can be passed along. You are not running this race for you. Your children are watching. Your siblings are watching. Your generation is watching. Watching what you will do with the Christ. Your spiritual work is repetitive. I close by making this statement. Build your life around repetitions that transforms your life. Build your life around repetitions that transforms your life. Build your life around repetitions that transform your life. Every time, 5 a.m., that's how time you preach. prays. Yes, keep praying that time, unapologetically. Before you do anything at work, she prays at work. That's your custom. Make it your custom. Have repetitions that transforms your life. Take a posture of five minutes. Take a posture of prayer, five minutes. You want to kneel? You want to lie down? You want to stand? Whatever you want to do. Want to trust the Lord for fresh fire? Take a posture. Take a posture. It's better you take that posture you take at home when you pray. It's better you take a very serious posture. You want to lie down, lie down? Just take a posture. Take a posture. He touch me. He touch me. Oh, what joy that fills my soul. Something happened and now I know. Let there be desire. Let there be desire. Let there be a task for God. That only you matters. He touched me. Aye, my Oh, what joy that fills my soul. Something happened. Something happened. Somebody right now, the fire is starting like a tingly sensation under your feet, under your feet. I increase the fire right now, the fire of the Holy Ghost. I increase the burning right now. Yeah, yeah, it's rising. It's rising. It's rising. It's, it's looking like you're stepping on on, on, on hot coals now. On not coals now. On not coals now. Le pos sataria. Eveli vratos satai. This salmon is not for everybody. 
is only for those who have a longing for Christ. Who are saying, Lord, I want more. I want more. And lick Apollo, Brasa, Taira, Vasha. Fresh fire, let it fall. Fresh fire, let it fall. Mete ye ke peli krada ba do breke li ba lo breke di da dos. Emra de 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 dum braka le ka ye ka ye da bash. Omra de 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 le krada de de dos ba le ba ye da bash. Omra de 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 dos. Yes, sir. Marco Palapasa. Lord, we acquire your glory this morning. We acquire your glory. Let your glory fall now upon your people. May he call it Frado Sitaya. Some of you are just somebody here. You need to let go of that offense. You need to let go of that odds. You need to let go of that offense. It's going to hinder you from destiny. It's going to stop you from prosperity. That offense is how the devil keeps you bound. Offenses are how the devil keeps you bound. Somebody right now, you need to let the healing power of the Lord let it flow. Let it flow. Stop keeping appearances. He sees you. He sees the heart in the inside. You need to say, I'm letting go. I'm letting go. Right now, uh, yeah, you know I'm speaking to you. You know I'm speaking to you. Meto pala pose. Pere pele praso attire. Thank you, Lord. 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 Everyone, rise. If you can, rise. If you cannot, you can be as you are. But if you can, rise. All right. We want to wait on him. We want to wait on him. In your heart, you are not going to say anything. You are just going to say, give me Jesus. Holy Spirit, come afresh. Fresh fire. Let it fall. You just begin to just, in your heart, something is going to happen to you now. I want you to take... Take that posture of openness. There's going to be like a silence apart from the keyboard. Our journalists will wait on him. We will wait on you, Jesus. Spirit of the Lord, these are vessels. Feel afresh, feel Holy Spirit, feel afresh. Let the cloud of glory let it fall. Let the angels unlock. Let chains be broken. Right now. All over this building. <laughs> All over this building. Yes. Yes. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. That's him. That's not your feeling. That's him. That's him. That's him. He's taking a hold of you. He's taking a hold of you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That out of stone, he wants it. There is a surgery taking place now. There's a surgery taking place. That heart of stone is taken away. And the heart of flesh. I see the angels bringing it. It's on a platter. They will just do it now. 
They'll just do it now. Aha. Aha. Lord, give us the tokenness of your presence right now. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Jesus. Take more. Take more. That's why you came. Take more. Somebody's instructions are given right now to you. Clearly. You are receiving instructions. Clearly. Aha, that's it. A circumcision of that here. I increase the volume of the Christ in your hearing now. Aha. Say, I came to hidden, I did not find you. Say, I came to hidden, I did not find you. I called your name, there was no response. Say, because your heart has been taken away from me. Say, I called, I called, I called, I called. You have forgotten the place of your covenant. Was I not there? Did I not hear? When you caught a covenant of salt with me, they have kept my side. But you have not kept yours. Say, look at how far your pursuer have brought you. Somebody you, you know is like you, every time you carry things and you make money, it's like you are pouring it into baskets with holes. Baskets with holes. God says, because I'm not your priority. Say, you, are, you want to defraud the covenant. This was not the covenant you made with me. This was not how we had it. This was not how we had it. You asked me to anoint you that you will sing for me. And you will sing to me. I have not heard your voice. You asked me to give you the gift of prophecy. I gave it to you. But you have not walked in line with me. You have not. You have taken pleasure over me. You have taken pleasure over me. I keep asking you, where is my place? Where is my space? You say you are trying to find a space for me. I will stay wherever I find space, even if it means in the manger. But I would rather be with you. I want to use you, but you don't want to submit to me. Is there someone here who is saying, Jesus, take the wheel? Take it from my hand. Save me from this road I'm on. I am letting go. There's somebody who is saying, I'm letting go. I saw a throne and I saw you and I saw that the throne was meant for you but you are not ready you are not ready I saw you I saw the throne but you are not ready it's your throne but you are not ready And the Lord showed me this twice. I 
saw you, I saw the throne. The throne was empty. The chair was royalty. It was meant for you, but you are not ready. Jesus keep calling his people. Ransom, will you answer this morning? Jesus keep calling us. Ransom, will you answer this morning? You need no more evidence. You've seen the cloud this morning. We need no more evidence. God has taught your heart this morning. You need no more evidence. You have met him. He said, I will prune you, but I won't use you if I have not pruned you. There is nothing called empowerment in ministry like a cloak that falls upon a man. If they tell you that they are lying to you. The empowerment in ministry and in life is staying in his presence and become radiating the light you caught from his presence. Greatest empowerment is in his light, in his fire, in his presence. When was the last time you prayed? God said to tell somebody here, there's a guy here who does not pray for a week or prays for five days, doesn't pray for five days, and then pray one day and pray and see a lot of things and return to his status quo. I see you in the realm of the spirit. And it is your lack of custom and consistency that has put you on the same position. It's the reason you live in offense. It's the reason you have not grown. It's the reason you get money and it seems like it comes into a basket. It's the reason the devil still rules. Because you have not garrisoned your heart and your life with customs that transforms life. With disciplines that transforms life. I see a lady here who has been hurt very terribly. And you are struggling to let go. Jesus said you can't heal yourself. He said give it to me and I will take it away. See I told you that take my yoke upon thee. He said give me that yoke. He said I will bear it. He said for my yoke is easy. This one you are carrying is heavy. Jesus says to tell you, he loves you still. It's the month of the Spirit. It's the month. Who am I that the highest king will have? Do you know the song? But free is free. Let's start from the beginning. Who am I? Who am I that the highest king will welcome me? Ha! I was lost, but you brought me. <laughs> Who is love for me? Is love for you. Who oh, is love for me? Who oh, the sun sets free? <laughs> oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, yes I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> In my father. There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Who the sun says free. Are you receiving your freedom? Oh, it's free. I'm a child of God, yes I am, in my Father's house, in my Father's there's a place for me, there's a place for me, I'm a child of God, I'm a child of God, yes I am. Yeah. 
not forsaken. Yeah. I am who you say I am. Lord, you are for me. Not against me. Not against me. Yeah. I am who you say I am. I am chosen. I am chosen. Not forsaken. Not forsaken. joy to call you father father your children have come home for more of your essence and more of your light fill our spirit of life oh God make us alive set us aglow oh God let nothing matter but you Jesus let us live our life for the audience of one let it be Jesus and Jesus alone. Let your spirit take us over. Oh, may we forever be joined with your spirit. Let us bear with pride the scar of your fire. Let your fire deaden vain ambition. Let your fire burn addiction and evil desires. Let your fire burn anything and everything that is not of you. Let our life be a true picture of your glory. Let our life carry the essence of your presence. Let nothing satisfy us but you. We cut a covenant with you that nothing else will satisfy us but you. Jesus, you alone will satisfy us. Ransom, Jesus alone will satisfy us. 